Hey YouTube, it's Dr. Chandler, your favorite neurologist. Strap in, because we're gonna talk about Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is the second most common neurodegenerative condition in the world. There are 90,000 new diagnoses of Parkinson's disease per year. In fact, there's a 1 million people currently living in the United States with Parkinson's disease and worldwide, there's 6 million people that struggle with Parkinson's disease. In fact, 4% of individuals that are diagnosed with Parkinson's disease get diagnosed before the age of 50. Today, I want to take you through a neurologist's perspective of Parkinson's disease. We're gonna talk about the symptoms that the patients have. I'm gonna teach you exactly what we look for to make a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. This topic is very broad. Parkinson's disease is very complex. I'm gonna keep it simple today, and we are going to pull the layers back of Parkinson's disease so that you understand Parkinson's perfectly. Let's talk about STRAP. STRAP is an acronym that's going to help you understand the signs and symptoms of Parkinson's disease. S stands for stiffness. If there is one thing that I could get drilled into your mind about Parkinson's disease, it's the fact that Parkinson's disease is a diagnosis of stiffness. And when I mean stiffness, I mean muscle stiffness. I mean stiffness of the arms and the legs. This is someone who you may see walking down the grocery store aisle and they have a decreased arm swing. One of their arms isn't swinging near as quickly or as far as the other arm because of stiffness. Now, Parkinson's disease stiffness does not just affect the musculoskeletal system. It also affects the smooth muscle in the body, like your stomach, like your esophagus. So when you swallow or you're trying to digest your food, it's also stiff. This can lead to constipation. In fact, constipation can be a precursor symptom before anybody even is diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And it's not just the muscles of the inside or the skeletal muscles that get affected, it's also the mood. Moods become stiff, they get depressed. These are symptoms of Parkinson's disease and speech also gets affected. Speech becomes very quiet or hypophonic. It's hard to produce a good volume when people speak. So remember the S for strap, when you are going to think about Parkinson's disease, stands for stiffness. This stiffness of the skeletal muscles, stiffness of stomach with constipation, stiffness in speech and a quiet voice. The second thing, and perhaps the thing you think of the most, is a tremor. And we think of tremor quite a bit with Parkinson's disease because 70 to 100% of patients that are diagnosed with Parkinson's disease display a tremor. But remember, I want you to think about stiffness because over 90% of the patients with Parkinson's disease that are diagnosed have stiffness. This tremor is very unique when we describe it in regards to Parkinson's disease. This tremor is most often unilateral, meaning that it affects one side of a patient more than it affects the other. Now this tremor can be on both sides, but it is typically more manifest or more pronounced in one side. This tremor happens at rest, not when someone is trying to move their arm. This tremor is described most frequently as a pill rolling tremor, like someone is trying to roll a pill in between their index finger and their thumb. This is small, it's subtle. This is the tremor of Parkinson's disease. It's not a tremor when someone's trying to take action or to reach and grab for things. Those are different types of tremors. Tremors found with essential tremor, tremors that are associated with multiple sclerosis. We are talking about specifically the tremor at rest that is pill rolling and predominantly one-sided or unilateral associated with Parkinson disease. So remember, strap yourself in, remember stiffness and tremor. Rigidity is the term that we use most often as neurologists when it comes to Parkinson's disease. I want you to lock in your brain stiffness and rigidity as being the same thing. 
They're very similar. When we talk about rigidity, we describe a specific type of rigidity. It has been most frequently described as cog wheel rigidity. What does that mean, Dr. Chandler? Cog wheel rigidity is like a gear. A gear is a cog wheel. If you think about your bike, your bike has a gear or a sprocket on it that moves. And if you put two of them together, they clunk, 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 clunk. They go in between each other and they lock themselves in as the gear moves around. That's how someone's arm typically feels that has Parkinson's disease. Instead of there being a nice smooth movement of the arm when we test their tone, how loose or floppy someone is, or how stiff and rigid they are, a Parkinson's patient is tested and they go chunk, chunk, chunk. This is rigidity. It's a specific type of rigidity, termed cog wheel rigidity. It is most often unilateral, affects one side more than the other. And one of the best things about this rigidity is that you can augment it. You can do maneuvers that bring this out. If you have someone doing repetitive hand movements on one side while you're testing rigidity on the other, it will bring out the rigidity and be much worse than if you're just trying to do it without the augmentation on the other side of the body. Rigidity, cogwheel in nature, typically unilateral, can be brought out by augmented moves. And the other thing that you're gonna see a lot of patients with is something that we call a masked face. This is a patient that comes in and they have less expression to their face. This is someone who has slowed facial movements. In fact, they look like they may not even be participating in the conversation. With you. They're not getting a brow furrow. They're not smiling as often or as frequently. They're stiff. Their face is more rigid. They may nod like this instead of like this. And the other thing that happens is dysphagia. This is difficulty with swallowing. Remember, rigidity and stiffness are very similar to each other. The A when it comes to remembering Parkinson's disease stands for akinesia. Akinesia means difficulty starting or initiating movements, no movements, or slowed movements like bradykinesia. This is the individual who is trying to walk and their walk is very slowed. All of their movements are slowed. In fact, it's not just slowed movements, but they can have dyskinesia. They can have difficulty with rapid alternating hand or finger movements, difficulty with movements. One of the tests we do a lot as neurologists is we ask people to tap their fingers. A patient with Parkinson's disease will catch. They won't be as fluent in their movement. It will be disrupted or dyskinetic. If you ask them to screw a light bulb in, they may have hesitation or catching as they're trying to do it. It's almost as if it's bringing out that cogwheeling that we see when we check tone, when we're checking rapid alternating movements. The other thing that is easy to test, that we test all the time in clinic, is foot tapping. We ask the patient to tap their foot 10 times. Most individuals, when you ask them to tap their foot 10 times, give you a nice, constant rhythm. Patients that have Parkinson's disease will have a smaller movement, and they will have a hard time keeping an exact rhythm. That's because of akinesia, or the disruption of movement that is caused by Parkinson's disease. And the P, when you are memorizing strap in, because we're talking about Parkinson's disease, stands for postural instability. Postural instability means that the individual with Parkinson's disease gets a stooped gait. They get hunched forward a little bit. Their center of gravity, instead of being above their hips and their chest, becomes leaned forward. They become stiff and they lose their posture. Remember, they have a decreased arm swing on one side compared to another, and they start to become off balance and can fall as they're trying to walk. Because with postural instability, not only are you stooped forward and you could fall, but you also have a slow, shuffling gait, difficulty picking up your feet. So if you're walking down the grocery store aisle and you see someone ahead of you, stooped, slunched forward a little bit with a slow shuffling gait and one arm swinging less than another arm, 
you may be thinking Parkinson's disease, for the most part, you're going to be 100% correct. The other thing that is displayed in Parkinson's disease that might be easy for you to recognize is something called turn and block. Remember, just like a shuffling gait, patients with Parkinson's disease have a hard time picking their feet up. And so when they turn, instead of planting their foot, turning and pivoting, they turn as if they're going around a square. Short, shuffling steps in order to get turned around to go the other direction. That is turn and block. Now, postural instability can affect patients in a rather dramatic fashion, especially if it affects their blood vessels. Remember, Parkinson's disease is not just a tremor. It does not just affect the stiffness of the skeletal muscles. It's also affecting mood, it's affecting speech, it's affecting your ability to process and swallow your food and digest your food, and it can also affect the blood vessels, making the blood vessels stiff, rigid, slow to respond and move. So that if a Parkinson's patient stands up too quickly, they may become very lightheaded. They may pass out and fall. They may experience orthostatic hypotension, low blood pressure when you stand up too quickly. All of these things can increase falls. And sometimes Parkinson's patients, when they try to stand up a little bit more, or if they go to step back, they will fall backwards because they don't have quick enough movements to correct their balance. So again, this is Parkinson's disease. This is what we see in Parkinson's disease. Remember, remember strap. It's the way that's gonna help you remember these signs and symptoms of Parkinson's disease. You probably know somebody with Parkinson's disease. It may be a family member of yours that has it. Recognizing these things and catching it early on can give us the opportunity as physicians to provide medical treatments that significantly change the quality of life for patients with Parkinson's disease. So let's talk about why these signs and symptoms happen. The best way to learn this, the best way to remember it, is to learn the neuroanatomy of the brain in regards to Parkinson's disease. This is best understood by learning about the basal ganglia. This is a portion of your brain that houses a specific type of neuron called a dopaminergic neuron. This basal ganglia can be subdivided into something called the substantia nigra. It's easy to remember the name because it is a dark area of the brain. This part of the brain, particularly the substantia nigra pars compacta, is full of dopaminergic neurons. It's the dopamine in this part of the brain that gives it its color when we look at it. In the substantia nigra pars compacta, in Parkinson's disease, you lose dopaminergic neurons. Dopamine is the key neuro signaler in the brain that helps you with movement, that helps you with mood, and that gives you motivation. So in Parkinson's disease, when you are losing the dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra pars compacta, you are losing your ability to move smoothly, seamlessly, to digest your food smoothly and seamlessly through the signals that are coming from your brain. So remember, the neuroanatomy of Parkinson's disease is a loss of dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra pars compacta meaning there is less dopamine available to the system. With less dopamine, you get strapped in. You get stiffness, rigidity, a tremor, akinesia, postural instability. Why do we lose these dopaminergic neurons? That's a great question. So far, our research has shown that perhaps upwards of 30% of the cause of this is genetic. There's several genes that have been identified, the Parkin gene, the LART2 gene, GBA, SNCA. These are genes that can increase your risk or have an increased tendency to be present in individuals with Parkinson's disease. The remainder of the risk are due to things like the environment, aging, inflammation, cellular stress. 
There's lots of things that we are still learning about Parkinson's disease. This is only the first video on Parkinson's disease that we will do. This is the clinical neurological basics of a Parkinson's disease presentation. Watch this video, learn from this video, share this video with others, and don't miss our next video on Parkinson's disease. We're gonna learn all about this together. Now, if you'd like a resource, something to read more about Parkinson's disease, visit the Michael J. Fox Foundation. As a neurologist, I have not found a better resource anywhere for anybody who wants to learn about Parkinson's disease, its causes, its symptoms, its treatments, and the research that's currently being done and the new discoveries that we have that have helped us and given us tools as neurologists to treat this condition.